Welcome to this global exclusive podcast. We are the FFB podcast, as it is known. And today we are joined by Muspel the Math Bitch and Baros the Degen. God save us all. Yeah, you know, like last episode with Lady Hero, I actually had to try to keep a lid on because, you know, I didn't want to, you know, ruin the episode. So I have so much pent up, you know, like... All right, and it... that, first we're going to talk about uh, Mazurka this week. Who is the new NB unit? Before Barrows can finish that thought. <laughs> I was going to do this great tangent about how, like, something so pent Mazurka up can be seen as testicles. And, uh, okay. We'll start off by talking about her TM and STMR, because that's actually probably more <laughs> exciting than her kit. Don't forget her VC. <laughs> yeah, uh, so her TM is actually pretty good. It's another killer materia for plants, and it has some resist on it. Like, it's not... Don't don't pull for it, but if you get it, I would use a Trust Moogle on her, definitely. Isn't this incredibly disappointing? J- just, just putting this out there, because this is literally just slightly better than Plant Killer. Slightly better than the plant killer materia. <laughs> yeah, and, but to be fair, I mean, the plant killer materia is really good. Yeah, because there's For no the plant two killers. plant bosses yeah. that exist. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you pull your NV and you're like, mm, I'm gonna TMR this fat ass juicy TM that's gonna be powerful. And you look at it and you're like, oh my fucking god. This you're gonna use been... it for what, two or three trials on one DV? I don't know. Yeah, and you know what? And you know what would be the best joke if her actual TMR ability is fucking insane. So you have to equip this shit on every boss. That would be the best. Actually, no, is her, it Muspel? Uh, let me look. Her base form. Her TM base form is isn't really that useless. great. But her uh, be a uh, oh, sorry, brave oh, ship oh. actually has a pretty decent team ability. Like like hundred yeah. percent additional hundred percent yeah. jump. Yeah. Uh, so. Her STMR exists, I guess. Yeah, it is, like, it is certainly what Dragoon item. uses two-handed items, really? Yeah, it's, it's a two-handed sphere with jump damage, but Dragoons typically don't want TDH, and the damage variance on two-handed spheres is awful. This is not very good, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it's, the it's, vision it's, card. Like, do Gumi still not know that jumps hit twice if dual wielded? Well, this, this is Alum's fault. This is Alum's okay, fault. Alum. This is Gumi's fault. I am so, sorry, I just blame Gumi for everything. Okay, does Alim not know that, you know, jump Probably abilities not, hit twice no. when dual wielded? How, how, how like, would they find out? They keep their developers locked inside a box with no contact with the outside world. Yeah, literally nobody tries this. They're like, oh my god, we're gonna make this fat-ass Dragoon. She's gonna have a variance weapon, and she's also gonna have chain mod increases. Blah, blah, blah. And then like, yeah, but yeah. nobody wants to use a variance weapon. Like, what the fuck? And then her card is fine. It's just a spear version of like 100% attack cards that we've been getting all over the place. What? Why is it a spirit version? No, sorry, spear, spear version. Spear, oh, okay. spear, spear, not, yeah. not a spirit version. Uh, spirit would be really weird, not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, it... it <laughs> The, the level 10 passive is for FFBE units, an extra 30% attack, which is a little more flexible than the ones that are just from, like, a specific mainline game, because there's more FFBE units, mm-hmm. but... I don't know, it's still gender pretty powerful. specific cards are pretty useful, too. I mean, it's still, like, 100 That's attack true. and 130% attack, attack if you're using a spear. That's that's actually pretty thick for a... Uh, for Here's a why you should card. be happy if you pull yeah. them with Herka. Your Edgar will be doing slightly more damage. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh... As a damage dealer, she is, eh, she bursts fairly hard, like 800 billion or something. Slightly she, above Tifa, right? Yeah, she, she's, well, she's clunky to use. The problem is that she's a TDH yeah. Dragoon, so you have to build her for, for full TDW. She can only equip spears. In practice, Tifa might outdamage her, just because killers and everything are really bad to year four on Mazurka. Yeah, but, but is in practice really that interesting? We can talk about in theory. Also, she takes a lot of turns of setup to get there because she can't burst into like turn six. Typically. Doesn't doesn't Mazurka feel like that she should have been released? I don't know, like six months ago, and she would have been slightly okay. But like somehow in the scheduling order, Mazurka got delayed, and now Probably, we get her yeah. now. That, Maybe, but must be. I'm, I'm guessing she... she got delayed until they could implement the chain cap thing. Yeah, probably. So, so why can't she burst until um, turn six? Like, I, I know that her uh, shift form LB gives her uh, mod boost. But yeah, is there she needs something to use else? her shift form LB. Then she needs to use her jump, and then she spends two turns in the air, and then she lands. 
Okay, so it's kind of like building up the 46 crits yeah. for the LB, of you, course. You could potentially burst on turn three. Wait, hang on. I always forget how jump turns work. You could burst on turn four if you were able to LB on turn one, but that's not very realistic. So more likely it's going to be turn five or six. Her, her damage isn't really anything to talk about. Like she has, and, and even in her like utility side, there are some things if we stretch it, like she has an innate Nethysite that can be triple casted. And, and two stack AOE Mirage. And two stack AOE Mirage on the same thing. But the other thing is um the three stack Mirage on her LB, I guess. Yeah. Which is also awkward. Well, well, there's one thing. I mean, she does have a lot of innate uh, jump damage, meaning that she's very easy to gear to cap jump damage. She does have 100% chain mastery already, meaning that she's like at 5x, right? So if you have lightning STMR, I'm just thinking... So I'm looking. I'm I'm not a math bitch, so I don't know this, but I'm looking at the damage numbers, and I see that okay, she bursts slightly harder than Tifa. But what if you wail her out? Is this one of those units that would actually do like Edgar or last gen damage? I think she if could you really scale well with out? STMRs. Is um, but the problem is that there's just so little room for her to get everything that she wants. Jump damage is not easy to gear for, even with STMRs, and jump damage and TDW and all the other stuff. I don't think she scale like no, I don't no, think no, this no. is a terror situation where you're gonna see no. massive gains. But I mean maybe, she has three hundred Yeah, but she has three hundred jump damage. You're wearing two cane spears, that's two hundred more. Right? No, wait, is cane fifty or one hundred? Uh, I forget. I forget too. It's, it's fifty, but right? It's, it's probably fifty, yeah. Well one thing that I think could be interesting and I think is what, what Alan was aiming for is that if you put on Lightning's STMR, you're gonna get a six times change cap with a jumper that also if she could hold a gun or some useful weapon, you know, with a high variance. I think that would have been really cool to see. The issue is because she already has four hundred percent innate TDH on her base film at least. So it's like mm. there is yeah. a, a room where maybe that could happen in a specific scenario. But it, I feel like that even then it's a stretch and it's an envy unit. So you're going to have to put it this way. Aside, if her vision card were worse, she would feel to me like a free envy unit, like Charlotte and Fizzlis. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, to, like even with variants, you need to beat a two X modifier because the jump hit twice. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's difficult to do. Yeah. I'm not sure that there's a whole lot else to say about her, but we can talk I about do wanna the other I do want to say one thing. I do want to... No, 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 no. I oh. want to say one thing about Mazurka, though. I think she has a very nice looking... Um, so her base form sprite is very plain, but I actually think her shift sprite is very good looking. It's very cool. It gives me, like, Freya from uh, Dragon... Uh, not Dragon Quest, Jesus Christ, from Final Fantasy IX vibes. Kind of like the same type of armor. I, I really like it. Did you guys look at it? I haven't had a chance to look at a Brave Shift. I only saw her like normal one. I was like, it's okay. I don't know. Her, her, no, her normal is just, you know, plain. Like her normal could be anything. But her Brave Shift looks really nice. How was it you looked at this on the wiki, Muspel? You told me once. How I looked at what? The, the Brave Shift sprite? The Brave Shift sprite, yeah. Uh, you go to the JP page for the unit and then you click on Brave Shift. Oh, well, that's nice. Huh. Yeah, I told I you. I guess the armor is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks nice. It looks nice. But yeah, unfortunately, she's she feels very off as an envy base, to be honest. Like it's it's, you know, I mean, on par with Tifa, who is who was free and old. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I just remember there was a unit last week that we skipped and we should probably talk about her. Mm. She's yeah, actually potentially more interesting than Mazurka. Ah, I guess, that's a stretch. Kind of. Mm. Uh, so yeah, last week uh, Untamed Wolf Edel got an NVA and we skipped talking about it because there were like 15 fucking units. <laughs> and all of them were named Lightning. That was really weird. Yeah. Uh, so Untamed Wolf Edel NVA is a wind evoker in her Brave Shift and that's pretty much it. Yep. I mean, she's one of those units that got nothing in her base, right? Or some passives, right? But nothing really. Yeah, she got some passives that I think have like mod boosts and more stats. Um, but I don't think her base form damage is notable in any way. Yeah. I honestly yeah. think that what they gave, like, so somebody needs to explain to me before I go on to this tangent, but like, how does the evoking Fenrir area work exactly? Is it an additive? Somebody said it was multiplicative. And I'm like, that makes no sense to me. I don't know. It's probably additive, but I, I don't know. I don't so think what it's is, good what is the Fenrir area? It's it's like some in type of AOE physical evasion or what? Yes, uh, increase evasion by twenty five percent to all 
uh, areas. So both boss and you? I don't know. It just says all areas. I would have to test it, and honestly, I don't want to test it. I mean, wait, multiplicative? This sounds, this sounds so dumb. No, it can't be multiplicative. It has to be additive, because all no, evasion but is additive. Some, some people told me that this is a special case where it's actually multiplicative instead of additive. The That's th so weird. No matter which way it goes, it's still one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> it's an area thing, too, so does it apply to enemies? It's like... Well, it's, it does say all it areas, like so it, it like, Usually it'll specify if it's just your side or just the enemy side when you're looking at an area effect. This says all areas, so I assume that means both. Holy but crap. if it's multiplicative and the boss has zero evasion, then I guess it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, yeah. we don't really have bosses with evasion, right? We just have bosses with mirage. We don't have bosses uh, with evasion. There's a couple or... with evasion. Uh, Omega uh -huh. and um, Boogeyman. So if you ever wanted to make your life a bit harder and an obsolete trial a bit more annoying, now you can. Next year yeah, we go. And that's all there is to say about Edel. So let's move on to the unit on this banner that is actually good, kind of unexpectedly, which is this, the five-star base unit, Trot, mm -hmm. uh, who kind of feels like a slightly upgraded version of Epsilon Nicole. Uh, he's got 40% tight mitigation, uh... 50% general mitigation. He has a 45% on demand version of general mitigation. He has massive 60% cooldown. Uh, does he? He oh, has yeah. a physical yeah. mid damage mid for 60%. It's on his yeah. cooldown. Yeah, 60% yeah. physical mid on a cooldown, and then like huge mitigation against birds. Yeah, this mm. guy really doesn't like birds. He really doesn't like birds. It, I think it's more that he really likes birds, and he's good at keeping them from clawing his eyes out. <laughs> yeah, he, he's kind of like he was, you know, he was raised by birds. His virginity was taken by a bird. You so know, and that gives yeah. him superpowers. Um, I, I wouldn't pull for him, but I could see him being used once in a while if we ever start to get fights that like hit the rest of your team instead of just damaging your tank. Or, you know, if there's a giant bird that need, that needs to be dealt with. But so far, we haven't had a bird to deal with in a while. So yeah, like when, if we get Scorn of Glacial Extreme and he's beating the shit out of your tanks, then I could see you bringing Trot to keep your tank alive, maybe. Is Trot the most interesting episode we've had since, what, like, Renora? Like, I don't know. Uh, Realm, maybe? Depending on if yeah, you Realm, Yeah, Realm was really good, of course. Okay, yeah, Realm yeah, was yeah. really cool, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's good. I mean, he's really good for all the mitigations. They are really strong. He can spam them. I, you know, he, he still doesn't come up to certain NVAs. Of course, he's a seven star, so you can't, yeah, I guess, his, compare him to NVAs, but still, yeah. His TM and STM are also fine. Uh, the STM are more so because just cause it has high attack, but I think one, 65 one flat attack. 65 flat attack is probably like one of the higher ones that we can get now. I it the... might be. It might be. It's either the highest or tied for the highest. The highest is what? Uh, no, Shinji it's tied. Zenaida. It's is Zenaida tied. is sixty five, so it's tied with Zenaida's. So more okay. flat attack is something that we would all appreciate. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. I would not mind getting four of Trot. Absolutely. Also, isn't it weird how like you lose your virginity, but you also take virginity? So, so like... and then the last unit that we have to talk about this week is NVA Reagan. Which is actually the highest damaging unit <laughs> this week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he does, like, uh, he can use fire or ice, and he does decent damage, I guess. He's around, like, uh, 300 billion damage per turn. Uh, he bursts pretty hard, about 700 billion, which is around what Tifa does. And he can do that on turn two. So, like, he's, he's a solid unit, um, but I... I would not recommend pulling for him or you seeing him, as is the case for most NVAs. It's just a big investment for somebody that's just still not quite top tier. But by this point, I think many veterans have like I don't know tons of copies of him. So yeah, that, that's kind of the thing. Like, yeah, it's a free strong unit. But um, but but I want to second what you're saying, Muspel, because here's the thing: neither his TMR or his STMR are, are that powerful either. So you really like. Like you, you don't you don't really care. Um, yeah, I do think his STMR is better than some people give it credit for. Like LB fill rate on armor is rare and it has some nice resists, but it's yeah. definitely it's not amazing by any stretch I mean, of the imagination. I mean I one hundred percent used it for the resists. That's that's the reason why I've used like I need a damage dealer with fire resist and then I equip this. It's fill rate, not flat fill, right? Yeah, yeah fill, fill rate. rate, fill rate. 
Uh, I also want to mention um, he has a weird cooldown, which is it's an eight turn cooldown and it lasts one turn, and he covers all coverable attacks, including fixed attacks, but not including anything that pierces cover. Uh, so that means that he can cover both physical and magical. Yeah, for one turn. Yeah, for one turn, once every eight turns. Yeah, and he will he, like he gets ninety percent mitigation when he uses this move, but there's still a very high chance that he'll die. But he, he, he has such it, massive it, stats. Like I don't think it would really matter. It, it's a re-raise on it too. So I mean, it, it's I don't think it's a weird cooldown. It's definitely a I want to survive this threshold cooldown. The problem is him, that he cannot multicast it with his damage moves. So if why you would use you that to? move, you're not dealing any damage that turn, and you're probably not pushing a threshold. Ah, okay, okay. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. But I mean, you might have like you have two Ragans, right? So the other one might be pushing the threshold on their own. Yeah, and but then... without chaining, eh. yeah, it's gonna Can't take four Reagan times longer. Can fit into an AR chain with this LB? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I remember Sins are checking that, and he posted it somewhere. It's like. You can technically fit Reagan into uh, Reagan's um like last half of his so Reagan goes into the last half of an AR frame perfectly at any time. So when that happens, technically, if you have other support chainers, a uh, Reagan could possibly just fit in there. But it's 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 a stretch again. That sounds very complex to be let honest. Me, let like me check it real of, quick. It sounds too annoying to be useful. Um, but that's how they've been using in DV, from what I collect. Like what some people have been using Rocket in DV, because you can't bring a dupe in DV. So, right. So what you're doing is you have like your Zon for your AR chain, and then you actually chain Rogan. Okay. So here's the thing. That's what people said we could use Squall with too when he came out on DV, and I did so many resets. Oh my God, <laughs> so many resets. And it's it's just not worth it. I mean, yeah, his LB is actually technically 100% a uh, AR chain. It's just that it's an LB, so it has a different cast delay. Uh, uh, that was Zon, Zon's LB is not an AR chain. No, Squall. Squall. Oh, Squall. Squall. Okay. Lone yeah, uh, so Squall. anyways, I just checked. Reagan can absolutely fit his LB into an AR chain. It's, not, it's actually pretty easy. You have like a 50 frame window where you can fit the whole thing. Yeah. So in, in a certain scenario, again, this is a stretch, but in a certain scenario, you could see where one Rogan is tanking and the other one is AR fitting it into another like support AR chain. And literally everyone has an AR wait, chain. Wait, wait. So. But, but I think you guys are looking at, the, uh, at different things. Muspel, you looked if you can fit him into a AR chain, right? Dual where cast I, AR, yeah. Dual yeah, cast exactly. AR, yeah. Where, where I, th I thought Shadow meant that his LB could chain with the last no, half no, no, I, of an I meant AR. that. Yeah, that meant you, I meant that you could weave it into the last half of AR and wouldn't break. And that way you exactly. can get your damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you have one AR, one chainer that just does no, AR. No, two chainers that do AR, and then you weave the last Rogan on top. Rogan's on top, weave, and then two... You can weave anything into AR. Not really. That's not entirely true. That's not true. It's mostly I mean, but true. Almost. <laughs> it's like, you, you can't fit, like, okay, I, I think that maybe the only thing you can't fit into AR is, like, multicasting Chaos Wave, because Chaos Wave has this weird thing where it has, like, uh, double hits or some shit on, on a single uh, uh, frame or something. I don't think Chaos Wave does that. The main pro the main thing you can't fit into AR is, like, quadcast Chaos Wave Awakened because it's too long. Okay. No, but the, but isn't isn't Chaos Wave or Chaos Wave Awakened one of those where it actually kind of almost like AR where it breaks itself if you multicast it? Because no, because that's uh, the thing with as AR. As far as I'm aware, the only chain family that will typically hit twice on the same frame is Ariel Ray if you triple cast it. Okay. Or quad cast it, obviously. Okay. Um, then I'm, I'm wrong. Then I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm usually wrong. So it's what about big... pentacasting AR? Hey. <laughs> I don't think anyone can do that yet. If, if you're listening to this, Gumi, the next Glux, Glux unit needs to pentacast oh, AR. Oh, God. As, as a TDH hybrid jumper. Yes. Oh, God. Anyway, should we should we move on? Do we have more units this week? This is it. This yeah. is it. Wow, I, this is such a surprise. Trial. We did this get is... a new trial, but, but I'm still surprised, you know, because last week we were, like, talking, like, it just wouldn't end. There was one lightning, two lightnings, three lightnings, four lightnings. And I'm like, no, you're kidding. No, there was four lightnings, actually. Holy shit. All right, good. Good. We're done with the units. I still think this banner was nice. I pulled for Mazurka. And I got an NV, but I got fucking Axtar. So I hate off-banner NVs. I really, really do. 
So I have not done this boss yet. Have either of you done the new trial? Yeah. No, but I've seen what people have been doing, and it looks so easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his AI. He has five abilities. He has a magic AoE. He has a physical AoE. He has two fixed AoEs that do a thousand damage and like an MP drain, and then he buffs his stats, and that's yes. it. So let me explain how this fight works. So what you need is you need a tank, a magic tank that's that's strong. Like let's say if you have Phazy. And aside from a magic tank, you also need two stack Mirage on your entire team every turn. And if you have these two things, this boss does no damage to you. That's exactly how this trial works. Yeah, this looks trivially easy. What the fuck? No, I mean like like Phazy Phazy takes like thirty damage from his attacks. Like she doesn't need healing. You you need Phazy and Renora and you're good. You can bring anything. So so my first run, I brought uh Phazy and Renora, of course, and then I brought SOS Lightning for breaks and chaining. I brought Selena to chain with my lightning and then I brought a Shui Yu and a French Shui Yu. That's like what you can do on this trial. I've seen some people clear it with a seven star only team. <laughs> yeah you can I mean why wouldn't you? So, I mean, it doesn't look but, so hard. No, but I want to say something about this. So, in the wake of a lot of trials that were, you know, quite exhausting when it comes to your team building and preparation and stuff like that, I definitely think that this was a breath of fresh air. And I, it, it's like this this face roll trial. You have your strong units. This is a time when they get to shine. If this if FFB was an anime, this would be the episode after the protagonist had just been on the training arc, came powered up as fuck, and you know beast the shit out of someone. This is this is that episode, and I like that episode. That's like my. That's why I watch Shonen. That's what I expect from a series boss battle. Like this is supposed to be an extreme trial, and there's just nothing here. I mean, it's extremely easy. Isn't isn't this in response to, like, Aelin figuring out that JP players didn't like hard, hard trials? Because the last two trials were Asher and Bahamut, and JP didn't like that. Well, so they're like, fine, we'll make it easy this time. And then this is like, because they, they, this happened before, right? Like, Scorn of the Iceberg, too hard. And then the next few trials, super easy. And then it gets hard again, super easy again. I, like, I, think, I think the problem is that Alum's idea of a hard trial is just bullshit, second half of bullshit. They don't know how yeah, to design, exactly. like, actually challenging trials that aren't awful yeah well i mean again like re re reiterate this but they've also kind of shat in the bed when it comes to mechanics so it sometimes might actually be hard designing a difficult trial without bullshit mechanics I because mean, they they need to come up with mechanics that counter the bullshit units like yeah reducing, exactly like reducing healing but they won't exactly. do that no, that's so stupid because that's the easiest thing for them to do. I I've said this many times before. I still think like, hey, Alim, if anyone from Alim is actually listening, I mean, I really hope you are, but there's this amazing mechanic in uh, Ark Knights. Um, and wait, did I say that right? Ark Knights? That's the game, right? The I don't know game. which game you're referring to. To the, so. the tower defense with dudes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the Arknights. Yeah, because they have this mechanic where you can choose what handicaps to bring into a trial and then your rewards multiply by the amount of handicaps you bring in. So you could bring in a handicap that is like reduces healing by 90%, for instance. That's a really cool handicap. And if if that ha if you like beat it with that handicap, maybe you get a really good weapon or something. But if you beat it without that handicap, then you get a, a STMR ticket or whatever, you know? I mean, they kind of do that with different difficulties of the fights, but... Yeah, but no, no, they don't because they still don't do the 90% healing. And that's the thing they would need to do. They would need to do like, you would need to have a, a, a Well, yeah, but they could make is... the harder version, like have the debuff. Like the, the problem oh, is yeah, that sure, they're not sure. offering multiple difficulties. The problem is that just the fights are not designed. Yeah, yeah. no, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to copy Arc Knight's mechanics. They could just do so that the extreme version has a 90% healing debuff or a 200% mana use um, buff, right? So, or buff, debuff, I guess. So spells should cost three times as much uh, and stuff like be that. Because this week there isn't a lot to talk about, I think one of the other added things we help in regards to Iron Giant is the fact that trial design by Alem hasn't always been the best. Like, there are some memorable good trials. I think original Gilgamesh was actually a fun trial. Yeah. Um, because original Gilgamesh always didn't require you to have five stars because there were a lot of four-star units that could do it with certain equipment and stuff. Um, I, I really like the original global exclusive Malboro, but I think that was more of Gumi. 
And I love Telfus on this. And I think everyone loved Telfus on this. So in, in a sense, <laughs> oh, well, fuck you. There, in a sense, there is a tr good track record of certain de good design in Trials. But I think what Alem could do to do better is play other games. And I feel like Alem doesn't do that. There aren't a lot of, there are a lot of other games. Like I think one of the better ones that they could get it from is probably, or as you said, Ark Knights, Final Fantasy XIV, um, there are some other mobile games they could probably play too, where there's I a mean, lot of I creative mean, dude, ways to create difficulty. All they need to do is fucking play a Final Fantasy game and realize what was difficult in the top. Like, play Final Fantasy X and uh, defeat the secret boss, no spoilers. Um, and, you know, like, figure out why was that fight difficult. Oh, was it difficult because the boss wiped you if you didn't use an element you have no idea you had to use? Was it difficult because a boss randomly snorts and or uh, KOs your units? No, that's that's not why the fight was difficult. It's almost always difficult because it's a fight of attrition and decision making. Like there is some RNG that you need to react to. Like, oof, this unit took a lot of damage. Now I have to change my strat going forward. But, but Last... Barrows, what if we made a fight where you had to gear your entire team for 340% resists to specific elements or you died preemptively? Oh, God. Wouldn't don't that be remind wonderful? Me of... Oh, don't remind me about Elemental Tetris. I forgot that entirely. <laughs> I'm oh, so glad God. Elemental Tetris is over because that was like one of the worst shit. aspects of this game. Yes, that was so bad. Oh, my God. Please don't do that again, Alem. Don't do... Like, my heart can't take it. But honestly, all you need to do is just invent a debuff that reduces uses healing by 90% and you have an interesting fight because now we can't heal our team up to 100% every turn and now the boss can actually wear you down before you kill it wow what yeah. an amazing mechanic it's so and disable uh, you know, re-raise holy oh yes yes that one too yeah, yeah, yeah. disable re-raise like like make it so that yeah just just add a no death mission with a really good reward hey hey how about how about making a trial that auto zombies you on the preemptive and you can't Fuck cure you. it? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I was not kidding. Imagine this. Imagine a trial that auto zombies you on the first turn, but the damage from the trial isn't, you know, like, holy shit. Wouldn't Fina just negate everything? Why would Fina negate everything? Because she can cure it. She can cure zombies. No, no, no. But I mean, you disable it. So it can't be cured. That's what I said, like, in the beginning. You can't cure it. Uh, so what you would need to do is, like, bring a barrier unit instead, right? And then the boss might, you know... And then the boss might do, like, if you have, like, 6k barriers, boss does 7k damage. Slowly starts wearing you down. That could be one way of implementing this, if they can't reduce healing effects for some reason. I don't know. In a world where we have Phasey as a unit, it has to be a trial that does, like, a lot of damage and it restricts could be uncoverable healer damage. use could be uncoverable damage but could we've be, already uh, had know, that phase like that. where everything was uncoverable didn't we like with the hybrid and fixed damages I, I don't think this would have to be every trial but like as a one-off i could see this being an interesting thing yeah i mean you know let, let's not pretend that actually i mean ffb actually has a lot of interesting mechanics you can still make an interesting trial that doesn't have to be absolute bullshit and i you know i don't know i, I actually liked bahamut that was actually a trial i enjoyed because I actually liked the mechanics behind Bahamut. Like, he would hit hard on certain turns. You had ways of avoiding that really hard burst. Um, it was pretty cool in that you only had one small window to burst in, so you kind of had to set up all your damage into it. It's also interesting how you had to break the bar even harder um, after the first. So so that's actually a good trial. That, that was a trial I enjoyed, and play, played it with, with several units. So, But, for instance, people were hyping up um, the latest trial... Asura. No, not Asura. Which came after Asura? This? No, 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 not Iron Giant. Before Iron Giant. There was something else. Demon Chimera? Uh, no. Bahamut? There was... No, no, no. There was a trial... Tonberry. The mo Okay, now I need to look at the trials. It's the most... One of the... Like, the most recent difficult trial. What is that? That's Asura, not Asura. Asura, Bahamut, Chimera. Then maybe it's Chimera. Because, like, everyone was hyping that up to be fun, and, like, I could barely get myself through one run of it. Oh, Mega, maybe. That was, that was probably it. As uh, I haven't Asura finished Kamira. I I did ask Asura, but one thing I didn't like about Asura is that um the beginning, the first phase, is actually a chore because one of your units is literally stuck to elemental duties, and I don't know if I like, really like that at all. Yeah, but, but that's kind of, kind of true for the entire fight, right? Because like on, on phase two, you have a unit summoning uh, golem every turn. My ex 
zero Gabronth actually survived most of the turns. So I wasn't summoning Golem, which is... This is going to be what? a short episode, uh, or it would be, but there's one other thing we can talk about that happened recently in JP, and we're not going to go into <laughs> super detail on the units themselves. But uh, JP released an NVA four-star base unit. Zile is now four-star to NV. So do we know how good he is? He's I okay. his kit... Like, his damage looks fucking awful. I haven't calculated it, but the modifiers are really bad. And then he has, like, some offensive support. Like, he has an imbue and AoE, yeah. 25% amp, and a good LP I mean, damage buff. I mean, I'm, I'm asking because I'm just kind of suspecting that a 4-star NVA would just actually be um, raw as fuck, right? He, like, he's a I, DV unit. He's entirely a DV unit from my perspective because he has... Yeah, like he, he has the imbues, sorry, the killers, the sort of buffs that you want on an NV support unit. I'm sorry, on a DV support unit that will allow you to like get your burst out really quickly. But other than that, I don't think you'll see him in trials ever. But it's interesting. Why? You know why? Okay, I want to ask this question. Like why? So they could still do a four star unit with a decent DV kit. There's nothing stopping them from. I I think that the idea that they're going for is that. NVAs were broadly a failure for anyone that wasn't a veteran because newer players just didn't have the copies and older players frequently weren't using them because they weren't as good as NV base units. Oh, that's so a good I'm, point. I'm wondering if they're point. doing four star NVAs as a way to make it so that, like, you know, here's an NV unit that isn't as good as the NV bases, but they're good for newer players. And you can still get them without, you know, having to pull 20 rainbows on this banner. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. That does make uh, a lot of sense. This is what actually NVAs should have been from the start, I just realized, when you pitched it like that, Muspel. Like, NVAs well, should have been four-star units. Mm -mm, not really, because... Well, maybe. The thing about Sile specifically is that they're, they're giving him out for free. So this time, instead of giving it a free five-star base NVA unit, they're giving it a free Sile... So in JP, what they started doing, I think around like, I don't know, Barts, so around the FF5 banner, is that they started giving out certain NVA units for free. In the FF5 banner, it was Gilgamesh. In FF15, I think it was Gladio. No, it wasn't. It was something. And then FF9, it was Beatrix. This time, they're giving away Xyle for free. So technically, they took away what was existing five-star NVA, five-star base NVAs for free to Xyle. Doesn't yeah, but but I mean, if this trend continues, where you know you get a banner, and maybe there won't be, or maybe there's one five star NVA and one four star NVA, I think that's smart from from various standpoints. First of all, it incentivizes even casual players to pull on this banner, because you know, like it's quite likely that you in in even one ten pull, you might get enough of the four star unit to NVA them. Um, That's less likely than you'd think. I, I don't actually know how many copies it takes. I, I think it okay, might still be Okay, I'm five, just assuming but... four, but okay. Oh yeah, well, I guess it depends on how many fragments you get from logging from, rewards and shit. From what I collected, it's basically you get a free STMR at seven star. You still need the same amount for seven star, so you still need two for seven star, but you get a free STMR removal when you seven star. Wait, he has, a seven, he has an STMR? It's, it's not great, but yes. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it, it's like a two-handed gun with resists. Oh. And like 140 attack. No, but 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 honestly, I like this. I like this. I think this is cool. I think this is cool because it's also an easier way to get it. So like, okay, maybe I was exaggerating with one 10 plus one, but you get what I'm saying. Like you can actually you can actually go towards an NVA of your own as a new player without well because cause really as Muspel as you said, Muspel, but well, I mean the only ones that had NVAs were veterans, and those didn't give a fuck about the NVAs, because the NVAs were usually usually not that powerful yeah and like he style isn't bad like for all for all intents and purposes i think there's a lot of places where we could use him in dv because he has a lot of like really big good killer buffs good lb buffs imbues so him as an nva i don't think they gimped him because he's a four star what i'm curious is does this set a precedent where they continue to release four star or is this a one-off thing where alim always does these one-off things and then they just give it up next next week yeah i mean alim is really good at experimenting you need to give them that they're really good at just trying stuff out and then just you know the the weirdest thing about this isn't even that they did a four star nva it's that they did a four star nva and they picked Zile, a unit that literally nobody has ever cared about in the history of the universe yeah that's how i reacted when people were dumping this picture in our discord by the way join our discord it's an amazing community and you can get a lot of help playing fb there and also you know look at weird memes and shit 
But yeah, when people were dropping this and saying, hey, there, like, there's a four-star NVA, and they showed me the screen, and it was Xyle, and I'm like, what? I, I, this, I woke up this in the can't morning, be right? and Shadow had pinged the entire server and said, stop fusing your four-stars. Oh, yeah, is, I your that. Al- Alum is making NVA four-star bases. I thought that he was trolling, and I almost banned him from the server. Yeah, I, I actually just wanted to ban him for doing an at everyone because fuck you, Shadow. But uh, but yeah, it's like, why Zyle? That's an excellent question, Maspo. Zyle has to be like an incredibly so, unlikable character. Nobody so cares about I, I, I asked the exact same question on our Discord chat, and I got hit with the, well, in the plot, he's actually really, really important, and this actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, I didn't really oh. read the plot that they were referencing, but a uh, few of them, including our ringleader Trag, was telling me how Vazile is actually really important, a good choice for a force. Well, part. that could be true for you know whatever story is coming up in JP. So maybe maybe like I mean okay. it could be that for this banner this makes a lot of sense because he is very okay. important in the story. <laughs> if if there's a story justification, then I suppose that makes sense. But I, from yeah. from a GL standpoint, it seemed very strange. Yeah, to me too, because like who is Zile? Like it would be like doing a Mercedes. NVA, right? Like does the obvious remember one would be Mercedes? Mercedes, Chizuru. There's a few four stars that everyone really liked. Luca. Wait, wait, wait. I use Mercedes in an er- ironic way because I'm assuming nobody knows who Mercedes is. She's literally a water axe in a time where nobody used used axes. I don't know. I I use Mercedes for quite a bit. Really? I don't know why. I I liked her. I liked her spray. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, but, mad respect for using a unit you like. That's how you should play the game. But the, the important thing here is that if Agrius gets an NVA, then Dad Hazard might come back. <gasps> that is true. What if no, Agrius... No, but, but, what, but, but, but wait, wait. That would mean that they would have to rerun we, an FFT banner, though. And that's no, not going to happen. Th- you have to realize we got an increase in chain camp for TDH. We got a four-star NVA before we ever got a CG Ramza. Doesn't that make all of this a bit weird? Like, Alim is doing everything in their godly power to not make a cg ramsa i'm just saying i just think it's a licensing issue and they just I, don't I don't think it's a licensing team. issue i think it's a matter of ramsa looks terrible like i don't know if you've seen ramsa's decidia model the fft designs no. do not lend themselves well to cg design well he doesn't have to be a cg he can just be a, a nv ramsa i still think it's a licensing thing because they could have still run a fft banner nothing stopping them from that Okay, now I need to look at the city uh, Ramza. Right? You don't need to. It looks hideous. No, 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 no. I, I need to. I, I, I need. I need to look at this. I mean, it's not that bad. It looks like he looks in the game. Okay, he looks like he's twelve. But aside from that, he looks like what he looks like in the game. What do you mean? I don't. I don't like it. What? I don't like but, it either. But this is like this is what he looks like. I don't get it. I think there's they... a there's a mercenary the... version as well. It seems so there's like a base Ramza version. Or a kid Ramza version, and there's a mercenary Ramza version too, and they both look. It's his. Fine. It's his eyes that really get me. I think his like, eyes and his lips. Uh, okay, Muspel, Muspel, zip the fuck up. Okay, I don't want you thinking about Ramza's lips. So oh, I think this is actually. Happened. Wait, wait. I, I see what you're saying. His lips are super freaky. You're, you're not my dad. Hazard is my dad. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. I, I see what you're saying. Something is weird about the lips. Nothing weird about <laughs> the eyes, though. They're just brown. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Shadow, are you racist? What? Like, I, I do think... you hate people with brown eyes? But but I yeah, think... I, I would say people, like, maybe stop fusing your four-star dupes. At maybe? Least in, at least for, like, a month or two. Like, see see where this is going in JP. I, like, I kept what the, what it. The, see if Alan explains what the fuck they're thinking. I mean, I would put it like this, like, fuse your four stars, but keep four, kind of. You know, like, make uh, sure you have four four stars on hand. I would hand. keep more than that, because you might want to get, like, EX plus two or plus three. I don't even know what kind of pearls it takes for these units. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of still, you know, four, because I'm assuming you're going to get some from login rewards. And, like, if you really want this four star, you're going to be pulling dailies and get one or something. So, okay, I, I honestly... I honestly think Ramza's model is fine, though. I think I think like there is nothing stopping them from making a CG Ramza or a CG Merc Ramza at all. Um, I mean, they fucking went back to Saken three again, and and that's also a collab we're not gonna get here, right? Because we d- didn't even get the first Saken collab, uh, the first Saken three collab, right? I the Trials of the Mana, yeah, but Trials no. of Man. I think the second one was Trials of Crap. I mean, we didn't get Hawk. We didn't get Hawk and the others. 
Apparently Xyle does not have EX plus 1, 2, or 3. He just goes Force Heart or Envy, and at EX 0, I guess he has his Grave Shift already. Oh, or at least okay. the, the, the wiki doesn't list, like, anything. For so him. I guess, keep, well, then keep 4. Wait, keep 4 no. of your 4 stars. Hang on. 4 4 list, stars, see. It does list stats for plus 1 to plus 3, but it doesn't list it under Awakening. So oh, I don't know okay, what the fuck. materials are. Didn't we get a Secret of Mana collaboration, but not a Trials of Mana collaboration? I'm not talking about uh, Trials of Mana. I'm trying, talking about Saken 3. Saken 3 is... Saken Detsu 3 is uh, Trials of Mana. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, because they did this weird re-release. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got a Secret of Mana collab, but not Trials of Mana. So yeah. it, in, in, it could still happen, I think? <laughs> I don't think it's very likely, but it could. Yeah, those games are not super popular here. Wonder, hey, do you think we could get like a Bravely Default collab? Would that be weird in a Final Fantasy game? Uh, they had great. one in JP. I think. Oh shit, they did! Agnes and and uh, whatever the fuck the other dudes Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure they sucked, but they got it. Yeah, shit, I would want a... Well, Bravely Default 2 just came out. I haven't played it yet. I yeah, and I think good. that's that's why some people are thinking that Alan will probably do another Bravely Default uh, collaboration soon. Yeah, but... Uh. Yeah, I again, mean, those units could be interesting. Like they could play on the whole job system, yada yada. We could get. Hey, imagine if a Final Fantasy Brave Exvius Two comes out, and it has a job system. My penis is so hard right now. <laughs> and that's the end of today's episode, everybody. Thank you for listening. And thank you for not thinking about my penis. Let, let me clarify. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening to Shadow. If you're listening to Barrows, I don't know how to help you. You need to see a doctor. Only, only God can help you. If if your podcast episode lasts for more than four hours, contact your doctor immediately. Mm-hmm.